how to install AAX, VST and AU plugins on your computer so you can use it in a DAW. In this video I'll show you step by step how to do it on a Mac. You need to realize that plugins are installed on your operating system, so Mac or Windows, and not installed in your DAW for example. That means that if you install a plugin that you can also use it by other applications. For example, if you install an AU plugin, you can use it in Logic, but you can also use it in Final Cut Pro, for example. And Final Cut Pro is the video editing software, and Logic is a DAW. When you install a VST plugin, that VST plugin is usable in Ableton Live, but also usable in Studio One. If you want to install a plugin, we first have to get it. So we go to the website of the manufacturer, in this case X for Records, because we want to download Serum. First we have to sign in, fill out our user credentials, download the plugin, select which operating system you want to have. In this case I want to download the Mac version. Once we have downloaded Serum, now we can install it. Let's go to the Finder and in Finder you'll see here Downloads and uh, over here is the file we just downloaded. Let's double click it and the window pops open. There is a .pkg file in here. Double click it. Now an installer will be started. This is the screen. Click continue. License agreement continue. I agree. Where do I want to install it? On the hard drive, continue. Uh, I don't want to change the install location, I want to install it in the default VST or AU plugin location, click install. Now it asks for a username and password. And now the installation is done, click close. Once we have installed our plugin, we can start our DAW. In this case, it's Studio One, so I go to Launchpad, Studio One. Let's create a new song. Now over here, your, in this case, uh, Serum is an instrument plugin, so it needs to be over here. Yes, X for Records Serum. There is an AU version and a VST version. Uh, let's create a new instrument track and drag, in this case, Serum to the track. And I need to use the serial number that was displayed on the site before. So let's go to this, back to the site. And on the site over here is your serial number. You can click this button. Of course, every procedure of every plugin is different. In this case, Serum is one of the most popular plugins. So I use this one as an example. Now, if I click this button, it's uh, copied to the clipboard. Now we can paste it. Uh, let's go back to our door. Let's paste it. You can use Command V if you like, or press the right button, press right mouse button and select paste. Then your key is pasted over here and let's say, okay. Serial number is accepted. It says, Visit X for Records, blah, 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 blah. Okay. And now we can use our plugin. When it comes to Studio One, I suggest you use the VST versions of plugins instead of AU versions, because there are some crashing issues with Studio One when it comes to AU plugins. It is entirely possible that your plugin is not here. That can be because of a couple of different reasons. Um, if you have your door open when you install a plugin, you need to rescan the plugin directory or quit your door and start it again because on every startup, most doors will rescan your plugin directory. In this case, when it comes to Studio One, it's uh, it's pretty easy. You uh, do a right click on the in this case the instruments and select refresh. Then it will rescan all the plugins in your plugin directory. In Studio One, you can select in which directory Studio One has to look for the, uh, its plugins. 
and you can do that in preferences uh, studio one preferences and then there is a tab sheet over here that's called locations and uh, it has a couple of sub tabs uh, user data file type sound sets instrument library vst plugins in this case i'm looking for the vst plugins so i select that library um it's here i can say if it needs to scan at uh, at at startup uh, you can reset the blacklist you can set a blacklist if your plugin is on that blacklist it won't show up in your door uh, because for example, your DAW crashes when it uses that plugin. Over here, you can set the uh, the plugin directories, and in this case, it's it has two directories. It scans the users username library audio plugins VSTs and the directory library audio plugins VST. There are two types of libraries. On your computer, there's a library that is for the whole computer. That is the one below here. And there is a library that is dedicated to a user. It's the easiest way for your plugins is to make it available for all users. So you don't need to reinstall plugins for different users, for example. You can find this directory by clicking on Finder. And go to, let's go to the directory, the general directory for all your users. Uh, the easiest way to go there is to click go in finder and then go to go to folder. There you can put in a address of your, of your computer. We go to the most upper directory there is on your computer. So we tap, we type in the forward slash and click on go. You will notice that there are a couple of items grayed out here. Those are hidden items. Uh, you probably don't see those on your computer. I find it quite annoying that macOS hides my hidden files, so I switch that off. So it displays those hidden files. You probably only will see applications and library system and users. I go to library, then I go to audio. Then I go to plugins. And there you will see components, how, mass, v, VST. You probably have a VST3 directory also here, but in this case, I didn't install VST3 plugins, so it's not there. Your AU plugins uh, are installed in components. In this case, when I go to the AU component directory, uh, you see it has a serum.component plugin in here. And when I go back, then I go to VST, then you see it has a serum.vst plugin over here. So there are two versions of serum installed, the AU version of the plugin and the VST version of the plugin. And the AAX version is only meant for Pro Tools and AAX is available on Windows and on Mac, but the DAW Pro Tools only accepts AAX plugins. Most other DAWs like Ableton Live or Persona Studio One in this case accepts and AU versions of plugins and VST versions of plugins. When your plugin doesn't show up in your DAW, you need to check these directories. So library audio plugins and see if your plugin is in this, in this list. The other location is... Uh, let's go in Finder again to go and go to folder. Uh, is the library folder in your users directory? So we go to users with a capital U, then type in your username. You need to know your username. It is over here. Then say slash uh, forward slash 
than library with a capital L. The reason why I need to specify it here because I can go to uh, uh, to my user, but it is a it is a hidden directory, so you won't see it. So it's easier to go directly to users slash uh, the uh, username slash library and click on go. It will take you to the library of that user, and again there is a audio directory. Click on audio, plugins. And again, here you have the same uh, the same directories. And the components uh, are installed the AU versions of the plugins, and on the VST are the VST plugins. In this case, Serum is installed for all users on the computer. That is what I would recommend. But uh, there are plugins that install their plugins under uh, under the user library. One of the advantages of Studio One is that you can assign your own directory where you want to store your VST plugins or AU plugins or whatever. Uh, in this case, when it comes to VST plugins, you can say add and you can add your own directory or remove it if you want. I don't want to remove it because those standard directories are, are set to the, to the right location. Okay. Let's say your plugin still doesn't show up and you made sure that it is in the right directory. So in the system library or in a user library, or you pointed your door to the right library, you made a refresh of your, of your plugin. So you rebooted your door. If it still doesn't show up, what you could look for is the version of the VSTs. It may be the case that some DAWs only support VST version two or three, and you have installed a version two and it only supports version three or it only supports version three and you installed version two. If your plugin still doesn't show up, uh, then you could, but that's the last thing I can think of. You have maybe an old plugin, a 32-bit plugin that you try to install on a 64-bit operating system and then your door can't simply read the, the, the plugin. At some point you're getting a lot of plugins and my advice would be to make a separate directory on your computer and download all the plugins that you that you bought and store them at one place. If you need at one point in your life career need to reinstall all the plugins, then you don't need to download them all again uh, and uh, download the keys again, etc., etc., etc. So one place to to have all your plugins that makes reinstalling or reinstalling from one computer to another, for example, that makes that a lot easier. Um, so let's just install a couple of plugins and see if the installation procedure is, is the same. Endless smile. This is Fab Filter. Kick two. In this case, Spire asks which plugin you want to install. Because I use Logic and I use uh, Studio One, I install the VSTs and the AUs. You see, when I go back to Studio One, I installed my plugins, but I didn't restart Studio One. Now I click with the right mouse button in the instruments tab, right mouse button, and I say refresh. And it will rescan all the plugins. And now there should be. Okay, that rescanning doesn't work properly. So let's quit the application. Quit Studio One and restart it again. <laughs> And now you will see under instruments that there are a lot more instruments here. Kick two is here, for example. And it asks for my user credentials or my, uh, or my key. But what if your manufacturer of your plugin doesn't provide you with such a fancy installer? Then you have to install it manually. In this case, I downloaded a while ago, uh, the free plugin Caratune, 
And uh, I downloaded it, I extracted it, so uh, from the zip file, I extracted that zip file, and from that zip file, in that zip file was Caratune. Uh, this is the download directory. Uh, how to install that? Well, right click on that file, that .vst file or au file, right click it, uh, go to copy caratune.vst. We go again to that directory where all those VSTs were installed. Go to folder and uh, let's uh, type in the address we want to go to. That was uh, slash library. Uh, and in library, we needed to have the audio directory and plugins. And you see here, I installed now my VST3 files and there is a VST3 directory over here. In this case, this is a VST2 file, so we go to VST. Now we are gonna paste this file, so right click next to one of those files, otherwise you right click on one of these um, and say paste. Paste, 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 paste. No, it's not here. Now we go to edit paste item and it asks me again for my username and password and if it's correct Caratune is over here and it needs to be in my door. Studio One is open. Let's close it. Instruments and Caratune is now over here. And now I can use it. I talk more about plugins in this video. Also, I have a beginner tutorial playlist that's over here and a Studio One playlist that is over here. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.